Want to take a look behind the scenes at one of Disney's best parks, Animal Kingdom? Well, I just watched the eighth and final episode of Disney Plus's new Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom from National Geographic. Stick with me and I'll break it down after the intro. Well, hello there. My name is Jeremy and welcome back to Freeform Disney, where I talk about all aspects of Disney, from the animated movies to the theme parks to Star Wars, Marvel, and Pixar, and the TV shows, and everything else in between. And that is why it's Freeform. And keep coming back every day for new daily content. If you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Now this is the eighth and final episode for season one. Don't know if there's a season two, but hey, we can hope. And this one is called Baby Gorilla Grace. Without any further time to waste, well, here is what went down. We started right on in, and we are seeing Augustus, although he's affectionately called Gus. Now, he is a Nile hippopotamus who's nearly two years old, so actually quite young when it really comes to it. And hey, he was actually born at Disney's Animal Kingdom back late at night in January of 2018. So actually, if we're at current time period, heck, he's working his way toward three years old now. Well, anyway, the big story here is that the hippos there are part of a species survival plan. So we need to hear from animal manager Scott, and they talk about how, well, for hippos like Gus, he's actually going to end up leaving and moving to a different facility. And he's not the only one at Animal Kingdom that's true for, so that means they need to work on some introductions so that he is more used to meeting other hippos and will have a better chance of success later on. And so we'll get to see that multi-step process that the hippos go to. But first, we get to see a little bit of a trimming of a tooth on Gus. Which, it's intriguing how the procedures are. So apparently one of the teeth was extra sharp or something there. So we bring in Keepers Mark and Marcus. The same people we saw back over on that Nile Crocodile episode. So that's interesting. And you just see essentially sawing through that tooth right there. And hey, pain-free apparently, so nothing to worry about on that. And what else is interesting there is just watching Marcus in go into the mouth, start cutting a little, and then duck right back out because you got to be careful with the hippo there. They're kind of feeding Gus throughout the process there to make sure that he gives him the opportunity to go do that cutting of the tooth. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it was a fun process to actually get to see and see how it happened and worked. And then we get to see the start of that whole meeting of two hippos. So... In this case, it's going to be 17-year-old Biko that Gus is meeting, who actually, intriguingly, is also going to be leaving Animal Kingdom. And he's one of the smaller males, and they picked him for that reason in part. So first, what they do is they do what they call howdies, which are apparently 20-minute sessions, and they've got them in a couple neighboring stalls, and so they can see each other and touch and smell between the bars. And it gives them a chance to, well, get the hippos used to each other and see some visual cues for how they're doing. After all, if they were really aggressive here, you wouldn't actually go further with the process. Because clearly, they would be a bad match. But things seem to be going well enough from here. And so eventually, we get to the point where they meet out in the open. And apparently, this was Animal Kingdom's first big introduction in the hippos there for a decade. So you had a whole ton of people out there watching. Probably more than you actually needed just to... Make sure that things are going well. <laughs> Just like you've seen it a few times before in this series, where there are a bunch of people gathering for some of those big events. And hey, if this is the first of like this in a decade, it's a pretty big event right there. Now, on top of that, we do hear that months of research and preparation went in prior to this. So I don't know exactly how many of those howdies they did or how often or how long, but certainly a bl plenty of those too. Now, what were they were watching for, the big thing was for Gus essentially to end up submitting to Biko. Biko being the 17-year-old and bigger, even if he's small overall for an adult hippo. And so we saw what were essentially good signs early on, Nico showing dominance by putting his head up on top of Gus. Some bit of normal wrestling, apparently. And then you even get this portion where Biko is chasing Gus around with a wide-open hippo mouth. Yo! They just look scary as a human. Oh, oh, I would never want to be chased around by a hippo with his mouth open like that. Yikes. Now, what was interesting, Gus, who's smaller, heck, not even two at this point, never showed submission to Vico. 
So he just stood his ground every time in there. He, he was not having any of that. And eventually, he works his way back to the ramp. So we actually get to go ahead and see what they do and how they step in when it doesn't work out. So Gus works his way back to that ramp, and they ended up seeing that. And, well, they ended up ringing this triangle really loud, opened up the gate to allow Gus back in. And that's how they ended up doing it, and it obviously worked just fine. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. I'm curious how significant the bell was within that or anything else that might have been done that we didn't see directly. But it feels like the most we've gotten to see in one of those uh, escape plans, shall we say. Sometimes we just don't really get to hear what those plans are at all, just that they would step in somehow. Well, anyway, that was pretty much it for the hippo section. We did get to make sure Gus was okay. And hey, there were a lot of interesting sections here. It was cool getting to know Gus. So that moves us on to our second section. So we are actually back to the Western Lowland Gorillas, and it has been a while since we saw them. So we're back to the same troop. It's Animal Manager Rachel walking us through most of this again. Now the focus this time is not Gino the father, like it was the other time, but it is Grace, little baby Grace. And Mother Cachata a little bit, too. Now Grace wasn't meeting all of her milestones for development and so they wanted to see her use her body and strength more to hold on to her mom, ride on her back more, but just wasn't working the hands the way that they should be used. And so, well, that meant we got to see some physical therapy from the cast members. And apparently these were everyday sessions they were doing where they would go ahead and try to get Grace up climbing the mesh up there and hopefully back down, although... That seemed to be the real problem, especially. She'd kind of call out to good old mother Cachada and she'd help her out. Or just kind of belly flop on down to Cachada. So they were having troubles there. And eventually, apparently, what they were doing wasn't working well enough, I guess. And they brought in an outside specialist, or two of them. So they brought in child development experts, Marshana and Susan. And they can do that because gorillas develop similarly enough to humans, so it actually allows them to cross over between the two. And, well, we see giant improvements. Uh, we never actually really hear what the heck the occupational therapist did differently than the keepers. And it's really sad about that. Well, anyway, we did see a little, like, we saw them moving her more away from Kashada a bit, so she wouldn't step in and help Grace. And that's probably part of it, but don't know entirely. Oh, it was also interesting having to see Mama get fed throughout the sessions. Just keep her with some food so she's okay with I was working with Grace over there. And then at the end, well, we got to see them back out and about in the enclosure. And Grace was doing a lot better. Mama was letting her go ahead and do more stuff on her own. And also Grace was riding up on Kashada's back. And hey, for what it's worth, by the way, let me know. It's fun to watch Grace throughout this too. Who doesn't like a young little gorilla, right? And hey, that's it for the gorillas, so onward to Southern White Rhinoceros once more. So we have seen the Southern White Rhinoceros in one other episode, as well as the Black Rhinos in a different one. So this is the same ones, and we we're going to hear a lot from Animal Keeper Jess again. And we're mainly focusing on Dugan again. It was his birthday the last time we saw him. But this time, instead of just focusing purely on Dugan and, say, his birthday, we're really focusing more on his interaction with the five female white rhinos. So that's Helen, Zhao, Kiyama, Kendi, and Lola. Now, Dugan has a little more trouble here because he's not as assertive of a rhino and apparently not used to female rhinos because he used to only live with his brother. So we see a little of that and a little of those troubles. And, well, we also see some of the fun you get there between rhinos. So love scrapes, as we referred to them, because we get a lot of sparring between the different rhinos and that does lead to some decent wounds sometimes. And he certainly had at least one good one in there. And, of course, any of the animals that they're keeping watch over, that means we better go check it out with a doctor. But this also showed us some of the trick of actually keeping watch on these animals, or actually being able to check up on them, and, well, you kind of have to work with them. Eh, they don't always make it easy, shall we say. So in this case, Dr. Jeff, at one last new doctor we had to go see, so hey, there's another one. Well, anyway, he came in to look at the wounds, and Dugan was asleep over there in the center and just was not going to go ahead and move. So no such luck there. That, that just is how it goes. So that meant Dr. Dan actually ended up coming by later a different time and did some thermal imaging to look for the inflammation. Definitely one of the tools we seem to like, because we've seen that thermal scanning, I think, two other times during the course of this show. 
First time was with uh, one of our elephants way back. First episode, I think, maybe? Second episode? Somewhere in there. But anyway, it does a good job of checking for that inflammation in an easy way without having to get as close, shall we say. And hey, largely, Dugan seemed to be pretty okay, so they weren't too worried about Dugan there. They took some steps, but no need for antibiotics or anything else like that. That was almost it, but we did get to see one last thing there with the section on the white rhinos. And this is because we finally had a pregnancy. Well, first we had to check and make sure it was one. And heck, even from that point, Keeper Jess was super excited, and super excited to dig in some poop, that is. Because that's how they actually check to see if the rhinos are pregnant, is you go in, grab some of that nice warm poop from the center of a pile of steaming rhino dung. And then you test that to see. <laughs> and we also got to see later where Keeper Nicole is breaking it to Jess and the two of them super excited. Very nice. I, again, it goes back to some of my comments on just how much I love seeing the cast members in the show and how much they add to it. Yeah, definitely, definitely nice. Now, to add a little bit of extra info beyond the show, Dugan's actually been keeping pretty busy since the show finished filming. So, Kendi, we saw get pregnant here in this episode, but since then, both Zhao and Lola are currently pregnant. And there's an interesting note, because in the show, we actually talked about Zhao and Lola both being really close friends as white rhinos, which makes you wonder if there's any connection to why those two are also pregnant there and not, say, the other two who are still in. I have no idea, but <laughs> it's an interesting question. Someone else would have to answer that and see if there was any idea if that has a connection or not. Not a clue on my side. Oh, and one last little bit. Kendi right there actually just gave birth back on October 25th to a new boy. And I actually had put some footage up of that in my most recent Disney news video. So less than a week ago on that news video. And that's a long pregnancy. Those pregnancies are like 16 to 18 months for white rhinos. Oof. Which also tells you about how long ago this was filmed. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, that is it for our white rhinos there on that section. So we got to see a little bit more of some of those other interactions. A little bit. And with that, we move off to our last animal species of the episode. So this is going to be a white spotted bamboo shark. And this is Flash, who is 20 years old. And we get to hear a little background, so we know that Flash actually is completely blind from an injury years and years ago, apparently. Probably part of why she's here over in the seas in the first place. And so that makes a little more trick with what Flash has to go ahead and do in order to eat and check everything else out. And we got to see a tiny emergency that Flash had to deal with. Because apparently some guests or other went ahead and tossed some almonds into the tank that Flash was in. Don't feed the animals. And in this case, that's actually incredibly dangerous for a shark like Flash. And that's actually because their digestive systems don't actually do well with hard things, so it could just end up sitting there and leading to an ulcer or other damage. So it's really a bad situation right there. And this meant we got to see a vet procedure, and we got to bring in Dr. Daedra for one last time. And one of the neat things I thought in this, uh, there were a few neat things actually, but... First was how they actually gave Flash anesthetic and how they went in about that. So they actually mixed it in with her water. And that was actually pretty neat right there. Although she almost looks dead for a moment, which is... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we got to really jump in there for a decent bit of the procedure. And I felt like we got to see more of it than usual, which was nice. Extending the scope down into her stomach, watching on the camera as we look for anything out of place finding the almond, and then doing the tricky work of grabbing that thing and then pulling it all, all the way back out. And yeah, just loved getting to see everyone at work on Flash there. And oh man, there were some worried people in there too. Animal manager Kevin just looked like such a worried person, worried parent, shall we say. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> yeah, when one of your animals that you love there, you know, is doing that bad and having to go through a procedure like this. Even though, as far as procedures are concerned, this is certainly on the nicer end. Even though, again, anytime anyone ever goes under anesthesia, any animal, human or other, it's always got potential danger under there. So, yeah, always a reason to worry a little, I suppose. Well, anyway, no long-term damage to the stomach there at all. Nothing too bad there. They got to it in time. Flashback out in the tank. And a nice finish right there. And... 
well, that that's it. That's it for the entire season. Now, hopefully this is the first of many seasons. Definitely hoping that one. But what about this episode as a whole? What did I think about it? Now, first, I've got to go ahead and say, one of the thoughts in my mind is just how did the longest episode of the season seem to have the least to say? Now, now in fairness, there's some good stuff. I like the hippo section. That easily could have fit in with any of the previous weeks. It was a great section. The shark section, it was definitely a good one, too. It was just super short and made me think, actually, at first that we'd be seeing five species today just because of how short that one was. But it's really the other two, the rhino and gorilla sections. They just felt like they were extra bits of story that just didn't quite fit into the episodes that they were originally used in, so then they were stretched out here to fill out an episode. Now, they were good bits, just not that long right there. And also, not in place of some of the other species we could have seen that I would have loved to have actually seen more. There are so many species between the seas and Animal Kingdom. Oh, dang. <laughs> oh, well. Well, what can you do, right? I, really, I guess mostly my problem is it felt like this episode was such wasted potential. It, it just makes me sad to say, but I think the season went out with a whimper instead of a bang. And there were so many good episodes in this season. If you remember, I came into episode one after finishing that one, and I wasn't so hot on the show, but after that, it definitely won me over. So, hey, don't worry, I am definitely still hoping for a season two. Hopefully enough people out there still love this episode and the rest of the season so that Disney's going to go ahead and order up a season two for us. After all, there are still so many species left to be seen. Like my cheetahs. We never saw my cheetahs. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, everyone, I definitely enjoy the show and I'm going to have to ask, hey, well, what about you? Who is your favorite animal this time? For me, let me tell you, it was easily our hippos. Gus was definitely star of this episode for me. And if we get a season two, what animal species would you love to see when it comes back? Let me know down below in the comments. And thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, please help me out. Give it a like, a share, and don't forget to go ahead and subscribe. I'll see you back here tomorrow for another new episode of Freeform Disney. Have a magical day and may the force be with you always.